Hey guys, Michael here, take three. <laughs> I just realized, anyway, um, not to waste time because I, I really do want to cover a pretty large amount of material here and do it as quickly as I can. So I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about everything, uh, just kind of show it. I've been re-evaluating and reviewing and just kind of revisiting uh, a collection of one of uh, my favorite bands of all time ever. Um, and um, the reason I've been doing that is, um, I'll tell you as I show you their first album. Uh, this is the first album by Camper Van Beethoven. Um, the album title is Telephone Free Landslide Victory, and it was originally released, I think, around 85 or 86. It was um, pressed in a, a very limited pressing, I think 1,000 to maybe 2,000 records. Um, the cover, which did have this artwork, um, was hand pressed, hand printed, um, and uh, it sold out fairly quickly. So they pressed a second limited pressing of it, and that sold out pretty quickly. At which time, Rough Trade got into the game and picked it up and to distribute it for them. It was put out on Independent Project Records, and there should be an insert with this album, and I, I am missing the insert. I bought this album recently online to replace the copy that I had originally had back in the mid 80s. And um, <laughs> I thought when I bought it that I was getting a true first pressing. And uh, it turned out to be this instead. I've contacted the seller and I really do believe that she just didn't know what she was doing. Um, and she's offered to refund me half of my money, which I think is fair. Uh, that means I, I paid top dollar for this, but not, um, I did, but I didn't get screwed uh, if she refunds me the money, which I told her I would agree to do rather than sending it back. I also have this copy of it, which I've had for a few years now. Um, this is a, a reissue that probably I think maybe dates from the early 90s, but I'm not really sure. Um, it's probably the last vinyl repressing of it. Um, and uh, it has a very unusual color scheme to it. All of these albums, every time it was repressed or reissued, they used a different color scheme. And most commonly what you'll see if you, if you don't see this color scheme uh, is a, a kind of a green, greenish, grayish, bluish, uh, pretty much monochromatic scheme with uh, the exception of the uh, Camper Van Beethoven being in orange. And I think it's in orange on every one of the issues. Um, but th I've never found any record of this uh, other than my copy. So I, 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 if you got information on that, hey, let me know. I would be thrilled to, to know the skinny on that. Um, there are some great songs on this, and this is one one of those albums that a lot of people who really don't, you know, uh, but they, you know, because it has a lot of, there's a lot of humor. It's a very playful band. They like to play tricks. They like to do all kinds of silly things. And so they have songs like The Day That Lassie Went to the Moon, uh, a, a copy of Wasted, the Black Flag song that I personally think is better than Black Flag's version, um, and, and a number of... Uh, interesting um, uh, instrumentals that are actually sort of fake Middle Eastern klezmer uh, kind of uh, rave-ups. Uh, most of those are um, the result of Jonathan Seagal, who was a multi, is a multi-instrumentalist, um, played violin, keyboards, guitar. He plays pretty much everything. Brilliant guy, too. Um, then I have, this is a first press, and a real first press, of their second album, which was titled Two and Three, um, and has, again, great songs. Um, oh, by the way, I, I, I don't know what my favorite song is on, on, uh, on um, uh, this album. I, it, it could very well be uh, Oh No, or it might be Where the Hell is Bill, which I really love. Um, uh, recently, I... I posted a, a picture of this, and a friend of mine said, um, oh, yeah, I, I really love that one song, Where the Hell is Dill? 
And so I, I went through the list of all the things that Bill, you know, while I was doing this. Um, anyway, fun, stupid aside. Great album. Absolutely brilliant, in my opinion, uh, again. Uh, and and I, I got to say, I think they got better. And, and um, not all bands get better as they continue on. But this, this really got good. Um, again, it, this is a first press. Uh, and, and I do have the insert for this one uh, still. And, um, and I'll show you the label, which I think is just an example of their their um, sense of humor. Uh, one side is side B, and the other side is side two. <laughs> um, pretty, uh, you know, that's just the way they were. One of the things about them is I think they determined very early on that they were not going to take themselves too seriously. Um, uh, but there are some great songs in here. Uh, Bad Trip, uh, great song. I love it. ZZ Top Goes to Egypt. I love it. Um, um, uh, no More Bullshit. Uh, 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 Cowboys from Hollywood. Uh, Sad Lover's Waltz, really good song. Uh, I Love Her All the Time. Uh, oh, my gosh. It just goes on and on. It, it's a great album uh, and one that I would uh, recommend to anybody. Uh, the, their early albums are right now in the process of being reissued in a uh, deluxe 5 LP box set. Um, that's really pretty pricey. I, I hope I can afford it. I'm not sure. Um, this is another later repress from um, around 90-ish, I think. Uh, and again, has a different color scheme. Uh, looks different. Uh, I'm going to ignore the phone. Um, uh, and the back, the back side of it is, is, uh, quite a bit different, I think. If you look at this, and then if I look at, uh, yeah, this, they they really do look, uh, considerably different. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, although based on the same artwork, just a few things are, are changed, including the fact that the the pitch a tent logo is is moved and a couple things like that. Um, pitch a tent. <laughs> uh, those of you who are familiar with Skato language may get that joke. Um, uh, anyway. Um, and it, that copy is not very good. I also have this copy of it, which is very, very, very good, very clean, and uh, probably the one that I would play the most often simply to avoid wearing out the first press. I only have one copy of this on vinyl. I do have it on, on CD as well. Um, and uh, a great album. This one, now David um, Lowry was doing a... a um, uh, a blog for a while called 300 Songs. Um, he has unpublished them right now. And they've been unpublished for a year or maybe more, um, which I'm really sorry to see that he did. He Incredible stories and, and background information on songs, all kinds of things. Uh, the initial idea was that he would randomly pull a song out and, and talk about it. He didn't continue that, but there were also tons of free mp3 downloads in it uh some off of albums and some off of other things and um you know um but in it he says that the title of the album is not self-titled camper van beethoven but it's actually titled soviet spy uh soviet spy swims uh, if i can read it the light's bad here Soviet spy swims upstream disguised as trout. Um, Soviet spy swims upstream dis disguised as trout. Is that true? I don't know. Uh, this may be one of my favorite albums if I, ha if I can really narrow it down to a favorite because no sooner do I say this than I'll put on another album and I'm like, oh my God, that is so good. Uh, but it's got such great songs. Good Guys and Bad Guys is, is just fantastic. Um, five Sticks. 
That's pretty cool. We saw Jerry's daughter, surprise truck, at Stairway to Heaven. Sick. Um, the, the History of Utah, I love that song. Still Wishing to Course, which um, is a, a Jonathan Siegel song, and I'll get to that in a second, because that also appears on his first solo album. Uh, Hull Yourself Down, Peace and Love, Interstellar Overdrive, an awesome version of Interstellar Overdrive with um, uh, psychedelic guitar solos, banjo, and Leaving One Dirty Sock. Um, and it is actually right down here. It also says, Soviet spies swim upstream disguised as trout. Right there. Just, um, you know, I don't know. But at any rate, so Eugene Chaborn kind of joined them on this, and, and uh, which kind of brings up one of the next records I'm going to show you. Um, actually, it very specifically brings it up, and that would be Camper Van Chadborn, which is Eugene Chadborn with Camper Van Beethoven, and this was released on um, Fundamental, I think was the name of the label, isn't it? Fundamental? Yeah, Fundamental Music. Um, I, I got into Eugene Chadborn at one time, and mainly because of Camper Van Beethoven and, and this album, which I love. I just played it this morning. It's a great album. Uh, not easy one to find. Um, and uh, but I'm very happy to have it, even though it's in kind of rough condition. Um, and you know, the, the moral of the, the story there is um, <clears throat> turntables and multi substance abuse do not mix. Um, I have two copies of this, and I just discovered or realized that I have two copies of this today. Um, I got one out and uh, to play, and then when I was pulling these out to, to make this video, I realized I had another one. Um, that, this is uh, Vampire Cam Mating Oven. Um, it was later reissued as Camper of Antiquities, but um, at the time, and this, David says, the whole essay thing that's on the back of it and everything was just complete BS, absolutely intended. Well, if you read it, you know right away a little bit, uh, um, he says, uh, a few months ago, months ago, Picture Tent Records president Imelda Byron Market asked me to compile a Camper Van Beethoven Rarities LP. I naturally jumped at the chance, especially since they were paying me, to chronicle the sometimes brilliant but often obscure and undisciplined 15-year CVB history. <laughs> they hadn't been together for 15 years. Not at this time. I, th I believe that Camper Van Beethoven, if I recall their history... Which is rather long and convoluted, but I think they actually formed in like 1984, something like that. Um, uh, and, and they were kind of back and forth between where they lived in the Inland Empire, um, that bizarre, desolate area um, east of L.A. Um, <clears throat> and Santa Cruz. Um, uh, after these albums were released, uh, they did get a, uh, a major label deal with um, Virgin. And um, this is their first major label record. Um, uh, Camper Van Beethoven, Our Beloved Revolutionary Sweetheart. Um, you, could, you could definitely hear a change immediately with this album. And it's not just a matter of budget, it's a matter of focus. Um, the, the, uh, a lot of the uh, experimental, humorous, and, and uh, kind of loose ends sort of uh, hippie thing is, is a little bit reeled in. But classic album, and, and definitely another one of my favorites. How about if I just say they're all my favorites? Um, the Eye of Fatima Parts 1 and 2 Oh Death which was my daughter's favorite this album came out in 1987 or 8 88 I think I, I can't remember right now um, but she was very little maybe 5 and she used to Oh Daddy play Oh Death <laughs> <laughs> I love my daughter as uh, anybody who knows me on Facebook knows, I, I talk about Ms. Lizzie fairly frequently. 
Um, and that is a that is a, a a great song cover of a very traditional song that has been played and covered by many many other people. But um, she divines water. My God, that album is that song is great. One of these days, if you figure it all out, be sure to let me. Turquoise jewelry, I love. Um, uh, and the, he talks about that line in there about take off that jumpsuit. It makes you look like Grace Slick. And about somebody running into Gray Slick at like a quick shop, at, you know, um, in, and she's wearing a jumpsuit and stuff. Uh, Waka, uh, change your mind, my past belated, never go back. Uh, which um, somebody just recently told me that they were at the show, at the rap show, that this was a, a, a song about. Um, and Life is grand, Tanya, which is, of course, where the line, Our Beloved Revolutionary Sweetheart, comes from. It's about, um, you know, Patty Hearst. Um, and it's a great, a great album. Um, and then their last major label album, and almost their last album ever, ever, um, Key Lime Pie. I remember when this came out, a lot of people didn't like it a whole lot. Um, and by the way, this has been reissued with the closing song included. Uh, as a double uh, LP uh, or as a CD, which and as a CD, it's got a whole bunch of extra stuff. Uh, they are pricey. Uh, this also has been reissued, and uh, as a CD, um, it's got a whole lot of like ten extra tracks, something like that. Um, God, they are pricey though. They are they're not very cheap, and apparently only can be ordered from England, so sh add shipping onto them and you'd be paying close to 50 bucks for one of these. Uh, Jonathan Siegel, though, has said, and of course he would say because, I mean, he's involved in it. Well, he's not really involved in this album. He was gone. He left after this album. And they hired uh, a woman to play with them. Um, and, and she was great. I saw them uh, during this trip. Uh, yeah, this was 89, this was 88. Um, and this has some, uh, at the time it came out, I remember people saying, people were disgruntled, they didn't think it was very good. Um, you know, I think they were kind of mad because Kristen was there instead of Jonathan. I don't know, I don't care. I loved it then and I love it now. Uh, some of my favorite, uh, Jack Ruby is one of my favorite songs by them. Uh, it is just passionate and bitter and uh, kind of confusing. Uh, Sweethearts. Um, you know, which uh, they still play. Uh, they have to change the version a little bit. This was during the Reagan years. In the mind of Ronald Reagan, you know, um, how's it go? In the mind of Ronald Reagan, something gears they, something clashes, gears they grind. Uh, you know, it just, uh, you know, or, and the captain smiles as we crash. Great song. Great song. Uh, nothing's changed, really. Reagan may not be present in anymore, but not a damn thing beyond that really seems to have changed. Uh, I was born in a laundromat, which is just an intense song. Uh, when, I, when I win the lottery, really, the, wor the, the weakest song on the album to me is Pictures of Matchstick Men, which I understand. They were very reluctant to do it. They still perform it, and I think they've kind of come to like it after, you know, but... Um, that was, you know, the label wanted them to do something like that. And I, my understanding is that's why they made that. Um, they went on tour and uh, imploded around in 1990, I think it was, when they were in the, kind of pretty much as, I, as it's described, the middle of nowhere in northeast Sweden <laughs> on tour. And they all went their separate ways and... Um, Pretty much, uh, that seemed to be the end of it uh, for a long time. Uh, I'll get back to that, but I'm going to show you a couple more related vinyl. Um, this is Jonathan Seagull's first solo album. Uh, it is called uh, S Storytelling, and it's a double LP. And it, on it is includes the, uh, the song Still Wishing to Course. Uh, but there's a lot of other stuff. Uh, and it's very much Jonathan Siegel. It does not sound in the least to me 
like a Camper Van Beethoven album. It sounds like a Jonathan Siegel album, which is a little more folky, a little more experimental, uh, since he was free to play uh, however he wanted. And, um, <coughs> and as an album goes, this is very sprawling. Um, he has done a lot of music, uh, soundtracks and all kinds of things, many of which are available on Bandcamp, I believe. Uh, and he, in fact, recently released another solo album. And then the band, Sans uh, Seagull and Sans David Lowry, uh, but pretty much other than that, it was the core musicians of um, the, the rest of uh, Camper Van Beethoven, also recorded and performed as the band Monks of Doom. Um, this is the only record I have by them. I did at one time have a CD by them. I don't even remember the title of that. And they put out a, 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 a nice handful of, of recordings over the years. Um, this one is, is number 261 out of 3,000, a limited edition uh, picture disc on CZ Records. And it's only got um, uh, three songs on it. Chain, Let's Split, and if it don't kill me, uh, Monks of Doom was David Immergluck, Victor Krumenacher, Greg Lisher, and Chris Patterson. Um, I don't know any more about this record than that. And this came out um, apparently in 1992. Um, uh, I didn't care much for the album that I'd had by them. Uh, I would like to hear it again now. Um, mainly because I think it didn't sound, again, it really didn't sound like Camper Van Beethoven. And, and I had it, I was kind of fixated on Camper Van Beethoven um, uh, at the time, you know. So maybe that's the deal. Okay, so that should have been the end of the story, but it isn't. And I'm happy that it isn't, very happy. I believe this is, uh, first of all, I'll show you, this is a, a an expanded uh, version of Vampire Cam Mating Oven, basically, which is a six-song EP. Um, so, uh, th but this is great to have Camper of Antiquities, and I do think this has been pressed to vinyl. I'm not entirely sure, though. Um, but then there, there was an album put out called Camper Van Beethoven is Dead, Long Live Camper Van Beethoven. Uh, and it has um, all kinds of... Uh, uh, things on it, um, different versions of songs. Uh, there is an amazing version of all her favorite fruit uh, with an orchestra. That oh my god, it is good, <laughs> uh, and and just uh, many many other things, including quite a few things that aren't anywhere else. But apparently, as I recall, uh, the story is, and I don't know if I have this right or not um, for sure. And I should always have that disclaimer. Everything I say may or may not be true could be an outright lie, utterly falsified, uh, or uh, may be merely confused by due to my uh, onset of uh, mild onset of dementia. Uh, but um, at any rate, I believe they got together to re-record uh, a few things for this when this was going to be put out, and they decided they kind of dug doing it. And so they, um, and when I got this, it had the, the, the little problem and that was attached to it. So they sent me this free too. That was the only copy they had at the moment, apparently, and the jewel box was damaged. So they sent me this as well in the mouth of the crocodile, which was Camper Van Beethoven, live in Seattle at the Crocodile Cafe in February 16th, 2004. Um, <clears throat> What had happened though, when when this album, when they started putting this out, um, they were they were kind of having a good time, and uh, they decided to see what else they could do. So they recorded. <laughs> this is just no. I mean, who but Camper would do? Well, actually, other people have done this kind of thing, but this album, I don't imagine anybody else doing. Uh, Camper Van Beethoven recorded their entire cover of the album Tusk. But when it was released, and it was released in 2004, as I recall, um, 
Is that right? Uh, I'm not seeing the date out of here. Um, yeah, I don't see I don't see a date for the for the album. It's a two CD set. Um, when they released it, though, rather than telling people it was a new Camper Van Beethoven album, they kind of let it be known and let it be uh, presented as though it were a lost um, bunch of tapes that had been uh, in someone's closet in his shoebox, as I recall, one of the Jonathan's or David's or the other David's or somebody's shoebox, and that they had been recorded during downtime while recording this album. That wasn't really true. And maybe, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the album that they said. But the, the truth was that, they, was that it was a new recording, and they just didn't want people to, um, to know that yet. They weren't ready to say, hey, we're back together. Um, but they are, and they've been playing and recording together quite frequently in tandem with um, Cracker, dep and depending on who's um, got the newest record out, um, that's the headliner, and then the, the other band does the uh, backup. Then uh, an album, an entirely new album, and this was released in 2004, uh, was Camper Van Beethoven's New Roman Times. I did not know this was out for about, I think it was three years after it had been released before I realized and even knew about it. Um, I wasn't really paying attention to, I, and I thought they were pretty much defunct. I, in fact, I totally thought they were defunct. So uh, I was really blown away to grab this. And David talks about the background, sort of uh, uh, made up, uh, future history of uh, Southwest America um, in which the, the United States has been divided up into all these different countries and um, uh, they're all at war with one another and stuff. Uh, but it's, it's a really good album uh, and has some great tracks on it. Uh, Sons of the New Golden West I, I think is great. Uh, white fluffy clouds that gummy like is back in style <laughs> um, uh, R&R Uzbekistan which is a short and totally one of those fake uh, you know uh, Eastern European uh, C Central Asian kind of things uh, long plastic hallway which is referring to the uh, um, who was it that said the music industry is like a long plastic hallway with, you know, and then all these, uh, and then bad things and then says it had a, a downside too. What's it, Hunter S. Thompson? Anyway, that's what it's referring to. Uh, ain't talking to this flower. Uh, I hate this part of Texas. Hippie Chicks, uh, which is probably uh, uh, the most single-esque uh, and so forth. Uh, good album. Good album. Um, and then no more albums for, for quite a while um, until this. And this is the, the next album that they put out uh, in 2012. And they are in the process of releasing the companion to this. Um, that's probably not the right term. I don't know that it's a companion. Uh, this is that I they've described as being this is sort of the camp Northern California uh, Camper Van Beethoven and the new album which title I cannot recall right now um, is Southern California more Inland Empire ish I guess I don't know um, but it, it is really good this is a really good album La Costa Perdida and um, I mean, you can see they, they, this is not a band that has stood still uh, in time. They, this does not sound like Telephone Free Landslide Victory. Um, they at times pull elements from their entire history, uh, but they, as musicians and uh, songwriters and everything, they grow. There are elements in here that I kind of find um, really remind me more of David Lowry's uh, fairly recent. Um, I think about the same year, uh, he put out a, his second, I think it was, solo 
album. I didn't grab that. I have that on CD over here. And, you know, but at any rate, um, uh, that's it. That's all I've got uh, by uh, Camper Van Beethoven right now. If you are not familiar with this band, um, I recommend that you, you check them out. If you are familiar, uh, then you probably dig in this, and you've probably got as good or better a collection than I do. Uh, a lot of people who are into this band are pretty fanatically into it. Um, uh, and I would be more so if I could afford to be so. Uh, I, I might even be one of those guys who'd follow them around the country, particularly the campouts. Um, there's more story I could tell and, and whatnot, but uh, I want to keep this as short as I can. And like I said, I've really covered a lot of stuff. And for me to cover this in anything less than an hour is kind of a miracle in itself. So, um, you know beautiful day and I'm enjoying it very much. Peace out.